Hi, hope you're all doing fine. In this video, I'll be discussing about C factor. So what is C factor? C factor is a tri-dimensional or three-dimensional configuration of a prepared cavity. And how do we calculate this C factor? C factor is usually calculated by dividing the number of bonded surfaces by the number of unbonded or free surfaces. So by obtaining the ratio, we obtain C factor. So how is it clinically relevant and why do we need to understand the importance of C factor? Let's take for example, in this case, we have a cavity and when we are planning to restore this cavity with a composite material or any resin based material, we have bonded surfaces as well as unbonded or free surfaces. So in this context, we have three bonded surfaces and one unbonded surface in this two dimensional diagram. So due to inherent tendency of any resin such as composite to undergo polymerization shrinkage, there is a greater chance for stress generation along the bonded areas. Since these surfaces of composite are bonded to tooth micromechanically, there can be stress generation along these areas. As a result of which there can be potential for bond disruption. However, we have a free surface in this scenario. So along this free surface, we can anticipate a free flow of composite, thereby reducing the amount of stress generated as a result of polymerization shrinkage. So basically in C factor, we're trying to obtain the ratio of number of bonded surfaces to the number of unbonded or free surfaces. So this factor helps us to analyze the amount of stress distribution or the amount of stress generation in a given cavity. For example, in case of a class one cavity, as you all know, we have five bonded surfaces. We have a buccal, lingual, mesial, distal as well as pulpal floors which are bonded to the restorative material such as composite and we have one unbonded or free surface that is the occlusal surface. So in a case of class 1 cavity we have so in class 1 we have five bonded and one unbonded surface. So the C factor in case of a class one cavity is five. It means there are greater number of bonded surfaces in a class one cavity. So as a result of which there are more chances for stress generation along these bonded areas and there is equal chance that the bond might get disrupted because of stress generation. So it's understood now that the greater the C factor that means the greater the bonded surface areas, the greater is the stress generation and vice versa. So C factor is directly related to the amount of stress generated in a given cavity. So let me give you a few examples. So as I have discussed previously, in a case of class one cavity, we have five bonded surfaces to one unbonded surface. So the C factor in case of a class one cavity is five. And coming to class four cavity, in case of class four cavity, the C factor is one divided by four. That is we have one bonded surface with four free surfaces, which include facial, lingual, proximal, and incisal. Okay, so the C factor in case of a class four cavity is 0.25. Now coming to class five cavity, if class five cavity is prepared in a conventional way, we have a mesial wall, distal wall, occlusal, gingival wall, and a pulpal floor. So these five are bonded surfaces, and we have only one unbonded or free surface that is on the facial or the buccal aspect. So in case of a conventional class Y cavity, the configuration factor for that cavity is five. However, in case of an abrasive lesion, the entire surface seems to be scooped out or saucer shaped and that surface has no definite walls and floor. Hence, that entire surface can be considered as a single bonded surface. So in case of an abrasive lesion, the configuration factor is one because you have only one bonded surface divided by only one free surface. So depending upon the shape of the cavity, in fact, the C factor changes. 
And the width of the cavity is also related to a C factor. That is the wider the cavity, so we have greater amount of surface area which is free. Hence, the C factor will be very much less. As C factor and the unbounded surface are inversely proportional, the greater the width of the cavity. So it's understood that we have greater surface area which is free and as a result of which C factor decreases. And several studies have shown that C factor when greater than 1, the ratio when it's greater than 1, there is a potential for bond disruption. So in order to minimize these stresses which are being generated as a result of polymerization shrinkage, we have different methods to reduce this. So we can either go for flowable composite liner or we can go for different placement techniques of composite or we can even alter the chemistry of composite by improving the filler particle content thereby decreasing polymerization shrinkage and also we can follow different modes of curing so we have a soft start delayed curing and ramped up curing so using these different techniques of a light curing we can alter or minimize the polymerization shrinkage which we come across in composite so understanding C factor is very much important and to summarize it gives us the configuration factor of a particular prepared cavity and it's calculated by dividing the number of bonded surfaces to the number of unbonded surfaces and clinically the greater the bonded surfaces the greater the potential for bond disruption in these areas because of stress generation so C factor gives us an idea of the amount of stress that can be generated in a given cavity by assessing the number of bonded to unbonded surfaces and even most importantly it's also related to the width of the cavity the greater the width of the cavity or the wider the cavity the lesser is the C factor because if the cavity is wider then we have more unbonded or free surface obviously the C factor decreases so C factor is highest in class 1 cavity which is 5 and C factor is least in case of a class 4 cavity which is 0.25 in case of class 5 cavity if it's a traditional or conventional cavity with all definite walls C factor is very much high which is 5 and if the cavity is because of an abrasive lesion so in that scenario the C factor is again less which is equivalent to 1 so this is in brief about C factor